What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out why does this era of WWE feel so much better? You wanna know why? I can tell you why. Because we don't have an old man that has lost his touch with what wrestling fans want to see on their television. That's the biggest reason. Vince is gone. Biggest reason why. The change we've received in WWE has been so much better. Is it perfect? No, it'll never be perfect. There was never a perfect era. There was always something wrong with each era of WWE. That's just how it is. But it's in the right direction. It's moving in the right directions. The stories, for the most part, not every story, but for the most part, are engaging. They don't insult your intelligence. They're stories that... I guess you can say bring up past situations that you may have forgot about, but it aligns itself perfectly. Continuity exists and matters and new stars are being built. Stars that you care about, stars that you are invested in. Storylines and angles that you care about that you're invested in. And, you know, there's still some of the hokey kid childish moments here and there. But for the most part, there are a lot more adult themed situations happening on the program that people want to get involved and interested in. And like I said, the biggest reason why this era of WWE feels so much better, it all goes back to Vince McMahon. The old guy is not in charge anymore. The guy that has lost his touch. The guy that will literally put out storylines that made absolute no sense, but only to embarrass said wrestler for his entertainment only, not ours. He's gone. And when you eliminate that, you're, you're bound to have something much better. So we're going to get into this. I can't wait to see this. Check this video out. Appreciate all the love support. Let's do the damn thing, man. One, two. Is this on? In 2024, the WWE is in the midst of a renaissance era with a hot product that hasn't been this good or popular since the early 2000s. For this video, we want to highlight how and why this is. From the groundwork that was laid in the years prior to the changes of leadership and the acquisition of top talent. And most of all, the complete 180 fans have witnessed Thank you when goosebumps. it comes to creative and overall presentation. A lot of people have called this, oh, the attitude era is back. What I have called this era is the, excuse my language, the that era. Today, we're explain why WWE feels so much better today. The seeds of yes. the new era were planted prior to 2022. The critically mm -hmm. acclaimed Bloodline storyline was better than anything the WWE had produced in probably a And now, here's the thing. I want to give credit where credit is due. The Bloodline storyline, especially during the pandemic era, was the catalyst for a lot of this. And we got to give credit where credit is due. Vince did allow this to happen. And I think because of COVID, and them having, they had to find ways to be entertaining without the fans being there. Kind of helped this whole situation come about. And of course, Roman Reigns being the one saying, hey, I need to go heal or I'm out of here. And Vince taking a chance on that. So I will give him credit. It was one of the last good things he did. Was give a chance to Roman Reigns uh, really taking this heel turn and, and really growing, growing this bloodline story and a tribal chief story. And also Gunther, because Vince was still in charge when Gunther became the Intercontinental Champion and he kept him strong until he was, you know, forced out the company. So there were some good things that was going on that Vince was in control of or had probably some part into it. So I'm not going to sit up there and shit on him completely, even though he deserves it. A decade. The way this story was told differed greatly from how the company presented their stories for a long time. In 2024, it continues to grip audiences as we can't wait to see what happens next. No. Oh, God. oh my God! You are not, not the high tribal chief. The arrival of Nick Khan would prove vital in altering the landscape of the company. He played a huge role in negotiating TV rights deals, as well as bringing the product mm -hmm. to Peacock and overseeing the sale to Endeavor. Under his leadership as WWE president, the organization has made waves to change its culture and repair the reputation damaged by the previous regime. Cody Rhodes' uh -huh. return at WrestleMania 38 was one of the most important moments that laid the foundations. For and Vince was around for that too. He was he co-signed on that too. 
for the next era. His presentation was unchanged from his time in AEW. His promos weren't like anything in WWE at the time. Yes, I cannot physically put that title belt into my father's hands. I cannot bestow it upon the American dream Dusty Rhodes, but I certainly can put it around the waist of the American nightmare. <laughs> Rhodes' performance with a torn peck at Hell in a Cell 2022 was unprecedented. In what could have been the lowest point in my career, in what could have been the absolute worst night, in what was literal hell, I was not cynical, I was not jaded, I stood, I fought! Cody was going to be that true top babyface the company had been looking mm -hmm. for since John Cena. I have to finish the story. Vince McMahon's retirement in July 2022 gave WWE a lift that it needed for quite some time. It provided mm -hmm. a long overdue creative and talent morale boost, something that can be observed from one of the first major shows without Vince, Clash at the Castle. Clash this the was castle. a historic, legendary event that set the tone for what was to come. It also cemented those who would be key players under the new regime. The Triple H project, so to speak. The Clash kicked off the slew of major international shows mm -hmm. that would soon dominate the yearly pay-per-view calendar. And that is also uh, a play into this... This era feels so refreshing because now we're getting so many international pay-per-views or PLEs as they call them now. And those crowds are so hungry for WWE that anytime they go to them, it makes the show that much even better because now the crowd is extra electric, they're extra hype. Everything seems so important. Everything seems so built, so big. So when you're watching it at home, you're like, Man, this is a good show. Like, once again, Backlash. Great pay-per-view. On paper, you're like, eh, okay. After WrestleMania, it's like, it's not much to go home about. But that crowd in France, Lyon, turned up. And they were so electric for everything. They made everything else on that card feel so important. And now that they're in talks of having WrestleMania come to the UK, go to London, like they're actually having talks about this. Oh, um, bruh, bruh, like it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's crazy to see this and, and really be thinking we could be having a WrestleMania legitimately in the UK because of just all the hype that WWE has brought these past few years, man. Multiple annual overseas events at this scale was completely unprecedented in WWE. Coming out of Clash at the Castle, the stories being told and overall quality within Raw, SmackDown and pay-per-view continued to improve. This is so cold blooded. Oh my god! Classic. Just as they had been doing since Triple H first took over, wrestlers who were previously fired or had left were brought back much to the delight of the people. This past year in my life, I, Rest in peace, I, I lost a lot of things. I lost my career. I lost my self-confidence. I lost two people who were very, very close to me. I lost my way. I thought that everything that I'd ever done here or otherwise, I thought it was all meaningless. Nothing I ever did has mattered to anyone. I was wrong. On top of this, fans would now Such be a great promo. for following the story and paying attention. We'd see seemingly minor things happening in segments that would have uh -huh. bigger implications later. Something that has remained to this day. Mm -hmm. Come on, boy! Get up, boy! Yeah, with that, if y'all remember... The truck, the little production truck had John Cena and Stone Cold. We did later find out that Stone Cold was supposed to be slated in helping Cody in the end. But I guess the money wasn't right and they couldn't get Stone Cold. So they ended up getting The Undertaker. But it's just those subtle things to pay attention to. Vince McMahon's return as the chairman in early 2023 was a setback. The usual post-WrestleMania creative lull coincided with his return to power, yep. but fans remained hopeful after Endeavor's purchase, especially since Nick Khan was promoted back to being president of the company. There was more hope when WWE's parent company, TKO, announced that The Rock had become a member of the board of directors. It was just days after Rock joined the board that news would emerge which uh -huh. ousted Vince once and for all. Watching Raw, SmackDown, and pay-per-views now, you can tell how much freedom talent are now afforded under Triple H. Where are you? I'm here. Come find so me. So good. You don't get. I'm not gonna beat you up. I'm oh, gonna oh, you up, bro. Oh, Where the oh, oh, are you? And with this that, so good. The confidence and quality of work that is evident when watching. Can we see it? Now Cody's going for it. Oh, oh. Breaker. Cody Buster. 
Beautiful There's plenty move. of performers that have been given a new lease hold of life on, on Triple on H. On. We gotta and watch we're going to have a level of confidence and quality of work that is evident when watching. Can we see this, it? Just allowing these wrestlers to really pull out some moves they normally wouldn't to really sell the fact that they got to dig deep into their wrestling bag to put someone away, someone away is much appreciated too. Nobody's going for it. There's plenty of performers that have been given a new lease of life under Triple H. And we're going to highlight some of those who have excelled the most. Starting with LA Knight. Yeah. The man who under Vince had been stripped of his persona and relegated to a manager role while on the cusp of being fired. Under the game, Knight was allowed to be himself again. Yes. This time on a big platform. And given his qualities, it was only a matter of time before the megastar got over with the WWE audience. Let me talk to you. Yeah. It's everywhere, huh? You set one foot outside that ring, I'll hit you so hard, I'll knock that hair back to gray. <laughs> because while you failed over and over again, while you were busy doing suffering succotash, <laughs> you're the head of the table, right? You're the tribal chief, right? Yeah. You're a defending champion, right? Yeah. No, no. I knew Will Smith was in the game, but I didn't know Uncle Phil became a rapper. <laughs> he says, who hot? Then top dollar, a lot, a lot of. Yeah. <laughs> I see you got your little five dollar haircut here. You're ready to take your school pictures. I just get the feeling you're not allowed within 50 yards of a school, you creep. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just want to punch them first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Right? You can answer. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You don't want to answer? Okay, yeah. You Let me <laughs> tell them whose game this is. L A night. Yeah, so over, bro. Tell them whose game this is. L -A -Night, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what everybody's saying. L -A -Night. Yeah. Everybody's saying. So cool to see. Look at that, man. So over, bro. 2023 was the year Jey Uso finally mm -hmm. broke off on his own. After putting in tremendous work as part of the bloodline, Jey joined Monday Night Raw to much fanfare. And I'm out too. <laughs> oh my God! Acknowledge me! Bop! Over the next month, so he become one of the brand's tough, top baby faces, aided by an immense cool factor, a breathtaking entrance, and a very popular. And character. here's the thing, I, bruh, Jay, he's still one of the most over individuals in the company, bro. But just think about that. La Knight at one point was the most over guy in the company. Jay Uso at one point was the top most over guy in the company, and they're still relatively at the top. That is really good to see. It's really great to see. Some of these talents that we've seen for a while or finally getting that, like we've seen them for a while or they weren't really given a good start when they got to the main roster and now they're essentially the stars of the company. Like it, it's just, it's cool to see that, man. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Just seeing how far they've come so far and where they could potentially be in the future. They're the stars of the company. People are wanting to see Jay Uso and be a part of the Yeet movement and people are wanting to see LA Knight and to do his catchphrase. That's how you know things have changed for the better. Catchphrase. Because it's just me, Oos, and main event, Jay Uso is now in your city. Yeet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeet. Yeah. Leon Frank. Oh my God, bro. He's up on the island of relevancy. One on one. Doesn't like Jey Uso. He's made that very clear. In recent years, Bailey had established herself as a great heel, but when uh -huh. cracks began to form in her damage control faction, fans knew it wouldn't be long until she would be that brilliant babyface the people got behind in NXT. It was all going to come down to the booking, and thankfully, uh -huh. the split from damage control was handled very well. A spectacular Royal Rumble victory led to a very good breakup angle.
Mm-hmm. The rest... The WrestleMania build was good. Uh, I will say post-WrestleMania, she didn't really have much going on. And it under, it's understandable. So why she ended up dropping the title at SummerSlam. I think her title reign had, had come to its end. But the build up to it was good. And I enjoyed that. I just think afterwards, I, they didn't really have much for her to sink her teeth into feud-wise. That was that engaging outside of Nia. So... That all built to Bailey getting a WrestleMania moment by becoming women's champion again. Bailey did it! I'm on a WrestleMania with The Rock, John Cena, The Undertaker. Trish Stratus is waiting to give me a hug after winning a championship. Sounds like a movie and it sounds like dreams. Since Triple H's takeover, a few wrestlers in WWE have been hotter than Rhea Ripley and Dominic Mysterio. Yeah. We can't talk about one without the other, given their fantastic story arc together. Rhea's presence was the motivation Dominic needed to turn on his father. He went from a white meat baby face to a despised, ungrateful so heel that good. turned his back on family to align with the Judgment Day. Rise with the Judgment Day or continue to... It's just funny how things have turned now. Rhea's out of Judgment Day. Damien Priest out of Judgment Day. We got Live in Judgment Day now. This is, it's, we're in another chapter of the Judgment Day saga, just like the Bloodline saga. So good, man. So damn good. Alongside your father. It was this version of the faction that made it a highlight of TV every week. Mainly so we could see what Dom and Rhea were going to get up to, but also to see how the brilliant feud with the Mysterios developed. Mm -hmm. I'm not your baby boy anymore. I'm a man. <laughs> I made him into a man. I was like, hey, yo! So good. Mom, shut up! <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mommy's always right. Exactly. Mommy's always right. Just like mommy's always on top. Hey, yo. Hey, yo, man. Hold on. I'll talk to Don't do this, Hey, yo. Oh, yeah. Mommy's always right. Exactly. Mommy's always right. Just like mommy's always on top. It could be my dumb dumb. <laughs> became one of the best heels on the show mm -hmm. like I was saying and now he's e he's an even bigger heel because he go he went against Rhea it uh he's a person you never turn on babyface I think he just honestly just have this how Ray is a perpetual baby facer to the end of time the same thing with Dominic just you I don't see myself ever rooting for this guy <laughs> so it's always good to boo dominic it's always good to hate him and i think he's going to be a perpetual heel until the end of time man i decided not to show aggression towards my dad i can't boo fuck you dom <laughs> i always thought they were pumping in that noise i didn't realize how loud it actually was when you were out here Ripley was the dominant <laughs> top star of the women's division. Mm -hmm. Liv Morgan's addition to the story just added further layers. She'd previously been injured by Rhea. Uh-huh. <laughs> so what better way to get revenge on Mommy than to put her on the shelf and try to seal her boyfriend on top of that? Liv, Liv Morgan! Liv Morgan! Oh my god! It was the type of storytelling fans had been crying out for in the years prior. I don't think that a gorgeous man like you should be with a girl that makes you call her mommy. You love that text I sent you, right? Let me get this for you. Ah! Dom is the real winner. <laughs> Dom's a real winner, man. <laughs> Triple H brought prestige back to the Intercontinental Championship. The ring general became the type of heel we weren't used to seeing in mm -hmm. WWE. His record-breaking IC title reign showcased the type of wrestling that blends sport and storytelling aspects together perfectly. I want to share some words about all the legends that held this great title before. You contributed absolutely nothing. Fans could now <laughs> be emotionally invested in Chad Gable and Sami Zayn's chase for the belt. Whoa. 
Oh. You can't beat Gunther. This was good, too. I am afraid, okay? Is that what you want to hear? <laughs> the melodramatics. But the match was great. Bop! Yes! Save. Not to mention the subsequent feud between uh -huh. the two that came from their desire to be champion. Trust me, the only tears you ever want to wipe off your child's face are tears of joy. Crawling toward the cover! Shoulders down! The premier story of the Triple H era, however, is Cody Rhodes vs. Roman Reigns mm -hmm. and how the power of the fans changed the story. Cody vs. Roman had been a hit the year prior. It's not because I think I am somebody. It's because I want to be somebody. Wrestling has more than one royal family. On the other side, Cody Rhodes is going to WrestleMania! But The Rock's inclusion in 2024 so completely changed the dynamic, as well as the addition of World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins, who had been a workhorse for the company, specifically in the last year. So he definitely earned a huge WrestleMania showcase as well. But when it came to the Great One, he was on the board of the company when it all came down to it. So the decision was in his hands. Plus TKO wanted him to star in the main event of the first WrestleMania under their ownership. You have an opportunity to bring this business up. You can always finish your story another time. The fan pushback towards the Brahma Bulls' involvement in Rhodes' story didn't just lead to a heel turn for The Rock. It signaled a shift to a more mm -hmm. risque, violent story. It was good. About our family again. Slap his teeth out of his mouth. This shit was wild, bro. When one good story ends, an even better one begins. This is so Biggest good, bro. Biggest WrestleMania of all time. Biggest tag match of all time. We accept. So well, it was good, already bro. bulletproof, but now this shit was good, bro. This ah, oh, they had they were on the the road to fucking it up, but the fan voice was heard in the pivot change and the switch. This will go down as one of the greatest WrestleMania builds of all time, and it's so funny that it involved The Rock, and I feel like The Rock has been involved in some really good WrestleMania builds. Still one of my favorites is Stone Cold versus The Rock. WrestleMania 17, still one of my favorite WrestleMania builds. And the fact that he was involved in this one many years later, and it worked because of an audible change. If Vince was in control, it would have been GG's. We wouldn't have gotten the match we got. We wouldn't have gotten the storytelling we would have got because they just would have went with what The Rock said. Despite what the fans was saying, this worked. This was great. And we're still not even done. You know he's coming back. You know he's going to want his shot at the title. We're just getting started. Oh, man. This is this was good. So good. Now, as a member of the board, he had even more control to influence the show without PG restrictions. But there was a method to the blood and swearing, since it acted as the seasoning for an already compelling thriller of a storyline. Uh, uh, this is what happens when you fuck with the final boss. Show is over. And then it stopped. That there's nothing that the final boss can't say I can't do. So good, bro. The finish to the story couldn't have been any sweeter. The entire WrestleMania weekend, plus the post match celebrations from night two, was the perfect illustration of the new era. Finally, pro wrestling was cool again. Cody's story wasn't the only one of its kind being told on WWE TV. Drew McIntyre's quest to be world champion dates back to 2020, when he actually won the title, but there was an asterisk next to his title reign since he never held a belt in front of fans. Then, after being screwed out of the title at Clash of the Castle, uh -huh. he slowly became someone that was done with it all. Perhaps uh -huh. the final straw was seeing CM Punk return in 2023 to seemingly move Drew further down the pecking order. McIntyre, future shock. I prayed for this and it happened. <laughs> it set the stage for another epic so story that good. also real life issues, <laughs> social media, and edgy storytelling. In all fairness, I really don't think I could be objectively fair with these two dip so... <laughs> <laughs> it resulted in a spectacular WrestleMania that closed one chapter and began yeah. another. Oh my God, CM Punk rolls out that brace and assaulting the champion McIntyre. To quote a great man, you never throw rocks at a man with a machine gun. <laughs> right here, you little bitch. <laughs> Love it, man. I dream broken dreams. I make them come true, mate. And tomorrow night, I'm going to make them for you. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, 
best in the world. In that ring, even at commentary, on the microphone, now a referee. Nobody can touch me. He said he prayed for it. Now I'm going to pray on him. And he's never going to ever be a champion here as long as I live. <laughs> and this is why this feud's so good. We not, we just getting started. Oh my God, this feud is so good. This feud is so good, bro. Amongst all these stories and beyond, what we have here is the closest thing we've seen to the Attitude Era. Not when it comes to the product, but in terms of business as well. Business is the biggest metric to show mm -hmm. us how wrestling really is cool again. We've already spoken about the sale to TKO, and then our multiple yearly international premium live events, such as the European shows which are accompanied by a live Smackdown and numerous house shows that just like the US events are packed to the rafters. Fans just can't get enough, as seen from the boisterous crowd reactions, particularly on overseas shows. <laughs> Look at that camera shaking. The WWE enjoyed 18 consecutive sellouts in the run-up to WrestleMania 40, uh -huh. which just goes to show how hot the product has been across 2023 and 24. On the show, the commentators would inform us of the company's continued growth. All the while, we got the impression the announcers were loving their work and enjoying the show. Just like the wrestlers, the announcers were given the freedom to perform their craft with far less handcuffs and restrictions. Mm -hmm. It benefited the stories being told and the overall product as a whole. Pat McAfee was a big star joining the broadcast team in 2021. This meant he could be himself, otherwise he wouldn't have agreed to come in. His infectious energy rubbed off on his partner, Michael Cole. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Pat McAfee here with us at ringside. <laughs> Pat McAfee's great, man. And then he... <laughs> Then <laughs> oh in 2022, we'd get to see a call that wasn't overproduced with someone constantly mm -hmm. in his ear. There's the cover to retain the title. Sammy Sane knocked out. <laughs> Bro, Michael Cole has been so great, man. I love what they've done with allowing Michael Cole to just call it, and he's been killing it. He's literally now the voice of WWE, and it fits. It's work. It's not forced. I love it. I love it. This is so good. So good, man. Plus, neither announcer had to worry about mentioning band terms anymore. It was easy yeah. to tell how much fun Pat and Cole were having. Tables in Philadelphia. Oh, we got picnic tables? Well, hey, boo boo, here comes Yogi Bear with the picnic. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we have on the panel with us tonight the man who the internet wrestling marks used to make headlines. The face of the <laughs> Is that Ken Shamrock? <laughs> Solo Sokoa. Chair shot. And WWE Women's World Champion Rhea Ripley. With who? A month away from her battle with <laughs> WrestleMania. Other improvements <laughs> include the commentators running down the card to start the show whilst in or by the ring. And McAfee's Bobby Heenan style analysis mm -hmm. using a telestrator. Man, you got antler juice all over you. The Vikings lost. And now you're trending as a guy that maybe is into some weird stuff. No! <laughs> he said, get in my belly! <laughs> There's lust in your eyes. She is straddling that man. <laughs> you know what that means? I do, but I don't know if we can talk about it live on Monday Night Raw. <laughs> but a lot more of gazing on another part of his body. There's another two. <laughs> we'll also highlight Samantha Irvine's fantastic ring introductions. She's been given the freedom to provide unique intros for countless wrestlers. Mm -hmm. This is something previous ring announcers were discouraged from doing by the higher ups. So to see Samantha being allowed to shine is a welcome addition to the Shout show. Shout out to Samantha, <laughs> killing it. Come here. Ring general. She be killing it.
That was a good one too. She be killing it. Stop it. Chelsea Green. I don't think you said her name right. If Samantha Urban just said her name right, I would like to hear it that way. <laughs> Chelsea Green. <laughs> well, now touching on the show, as visually improved from a production standpoint, Kevin Dunn was WWE's head of Green. TV production for over 20 yeah. years. He was also Vince McMahon's right-hand man. So once Vince left, it was only a matter of time before Dunn was gone too. Mm -hmm. Under Dunn, the television product had looked the same for years. And within that time, many of Kevin's production tropes really got under fans' skin. So many camera cuts. Look at that. Too many cuts. Stop the cuts. So many cuts. Yep. Edge with a spear. The regime change was the perfect opportunity to freshen up the show's appearance. The improvements that followed greatly enhanced the viewing experience. It was mm -hmm. a complete night and day difference compared to before. Dunn's replacement was ESPN's former vice president of production, Lee Pitting. The improvements were evident immediately. Yes. Pitting gave WWE a more sports-like presentation, doing so by filming wrestlers when they arrive at the uh -huh. arena. Owens here, Koala Bear and Toe, Kevin Owens. Looking to win his first chamber match. Tonight, Cody Rhodes makes his WrestleMania decision. Will he finish the story? And there's a storm brewing in the Queen of the Ring tournament as Jay Cargill advanced last week. The transitions to commercials showcase special graphics unique mm -hmm. to the wrestler on camera at the time. Just the subtle stuff. Make things that much better. Just the subtle things, man. After returning from break, long continuous shots were utilized. Uh -huh. matchup in the King of the Ring tournament. Love that shot. Seamus, as physical as we expected. Look at that. This just is Friday night SmackDown on Fox, and we are witnessing one-on-one -on -one action stacked up. Stratton on top. We would see the camera follow the rest mm -hmm. of the man has come around to Columbus. And she's come here looking for a fight. The continuous shots is tough. That shit is so cool, bro. One scene would seamlessly blend into the next. Mm -hmm. This one right here was tough. Let's get out of here. Well, apparently the Liv Morgan Revenge Tour is underway. The appearance of the ring and stage area benefited from a more stripped back appearance, mm -hmm. shifting our complete focus to the action with darker colors lit around the ring as opposed to bright LED screens. Not to mention the excellent use of overhead shots. Now on the announce table, Kofi Kingston and Yeah. Good, they're now going to turn it into a Boston crab. A Boston crab on the announce table. Ricochet flies. This was tough. The, the drone shot, that was tough. That was tough. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> the sports like feel we just spoke about can also be seen during the pre and post shows WWE put on during the weekend of premium live events. The kickoff events whet fans' appetite and build excitement for the big show mm -hmm. as wrestlers bounce off the crowd, cutting promos in a loose and free environment. Hey, 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 I'm just glad I got to get in Canada. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, man. The post-game shows run like a sports press conference, as the talent who just competed give their thoughts on the event and their performance while taking questions from the media. We are the best. This isn't a promo. I'm not, you know, I didn't look in the mirror in the shower and come up with this stuff. This is as real as it gets. And the man I beat tonight, his dad told me that 10 years ago. Everybody um. acknowledge me. 
Who did that? Yeah. Eve. Yeah. I'm serious. The lady with the glasses, get her out. Get her out or I'm leaving. You feel me? Bro, that shit was so wild. <laughs> Someone said, boo. Who did that? Lady with the glasses, get her out. I'm dead ass. Like, you, she got to go. No, get out. No? All right, I'm going to leave. <laughs> shit was great. And then this one, when they were lit, when they won the tag house, boys was lit. Like, for real. Do you feel him, sir? I do. Yeah. Appreciate him though, man. But man, <gasps> nobody told us we were doing the presser. So the so the bus is sponsored by Wheatley Vodka. It's sponsored. Triple H is often the highlight of the presses with the game giving a fascinating insight into his creative process and also fighting off some tough questions. Fightful and PW Insider reported that Drew Gulak was released by WWE. If you're going to cite news sources, pick good ones. That's where I would start. The credible, really, maybe. I feel like I'm Damn. on the main event of one of those seven hour pay-per-views where you're just like, please get the thing over with. Don't read into that, Jesus. <laughs> one of ours, I was in main events of stuff that went six, seven hours, dreading having to go out there to a silence, right? Just calm down. Under the nation, <laughs> it's Renaissance era. Our world here of professional wrestling, uh, it is a new era. It is a new time. It is a new era. It is. At long last, the power is back and professional wrestling is cool again. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to this check out This was such a great video, man. Such a great video. Gonna go ahead and give Wrestling Flashbacks a like. If you haven't subscribed to him, go ahead, subscribe. You make some great videos. This is fantastic. This is, this is what wrestling is supposed to feel like. This is what wrestling is supposed to be and I, I i'm loving it i'm loving the product it feels good to have been invested for so long and now it seems like it's paying off like before i was just watching the ple's or the pay-per-views they used to call them back in the day i was just watching them off camera then i suggested to you know watch them on camera then i suggested not suggested i decided to watch them on camera on my personal page then i suggested to the homies on the, on the in the clutch page i suggested it to dub and true billy at the time let's do it on this page and it was kind of tough because they was like yo what is this they hadn't watched wrestling wwe in so long they was like what is this the storylines were cringe so he was like i don't know about this but we stayed true and i was like there's some good stuff here we just gotta stay with it and now years later it's been one of those things where it's paid off the storylines are paying off the intrigue is paying off like seeing all the homies watch SummerSlam with us this past weekend it was such a great feeling we all enjoyed ourselves we all got lost in the matches and the stories the fact that WWE has seen us a few times we've been featured on the WrestleMania 40 documentary. We've been featured on the Rocks page. You know, the you know, CM Punk has reposted us. So many other wrestlers, you know, have you know seen our content, our reactions, and our joy from the product. And it's dope. We've been featured on Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. I, to me, that's always gonna be something that I cherish because it's like, damn, this really happened because of our love for the product. And the product actually being entertaining and actually being good. So, comment down below. Let me know what is your favorite part of this new era of WWE. It can be as simple as the camera angles. Let me know what's your favorite part of this new era of WWE. I appreciate all the love support y'all showing on the channel. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See you next one. Peace.